There are an endless amount of things you can obsess over in every mix you do, but what actually matters most? What is it that really defines whether your mix is professional and competitive or kind of amateur and demo quality? Well, in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you the two things that matter most in your mix. Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to do this video on what defines your mix, what, what matters most. And when I think of those words, what defines your mix, I remember hearing Chris Lord Algae say there were two things that really defined the mix for him. And then I, I was watching this video on Warren Hewart's channel recently, actually with a mixer that I really like uh, named Ben Gross. And he was kind of walking through his analog gear in the studio. And he made this joke about, you know, I, I save these compressors and these EQs for these two things that matter most because, you know, this, this doesn't matter. Right. And he was using the cheaper uh, analog outboard gear on the things that to him didn't matter. And I happened to totally agree. Now, I won't keep you in suspense any longer. What what were those things that these both these guys and myself are talking about? Well, it's the drums and it's the vocals. So you see Ben Gross in this video, he says, oh, I'll use, I'll use those on guitars, they don't really matter. And he's kind of laughing about it, they're both laughing about it. And it kind of reminded me of a video I made like many years ago called Why Your Guitar Tone Doesn't Matter As Much As You Think It Does. And in that video, I talked about why your guitar tone really doesn't define the mix. And I'm gonna go more in depth in this video and ex explain why. And guitar tone's a good example of something that, especially in the rock and metal world, we can really go down the rabbit hole. We can spend hours and hours trying different amps and cabs and miking in different spots, and we can literally sit and fiddle with the knobs on an amp for hours, and some people just really like doing that. But in my opinion, that actually doesn't make that much difference in the mix. Your guitar tone can be a wide variety of different sounds and, and really not make a difference in whether your mix sounds professional or not. But in contrast, if your drums sound kind of weak and amateur, and if your vocals sound kind of weak and amateur, then your mix is not going to compete no matter how good your guitar or bass tone are. So let me just show you a little cross section of my own work to really show you what I mean. So listen specifically to the guitar tone in each of these examples. So you can hear just in those quick examples that the guitar tone changed dramatically from song to song. Some of them were really grungy and kind of mid-rangey. Others were more scooped and modern sounding and bright. And others were more just kind of dark and almost muffly sounding compared to the others. Yet they all sound like professional mixes. So why is that? Well, I believe the things that define and really make or break the mix are the drums and really most notably the snare and the vocals. Th those two things, the drums, and the vocals, these are what really make or break your mix. If you've got weak drums and kind of muddy and soft sounding drums, then it sounds amateur. And likewise, if you've got a vocal that's kind of dark and not really defined, that's that's either too loud or too quiet in the mix, then that's a dead giveaway. And it's, it's kind of distracting to the listener and it doesn't come across as sounding the way it should to the average listener, not just to engineers, but I'm talking about the average listener. And remember, you're serving the song. You want the fan of the band and of the music to hear the song and not really think of the mix at all, except to just get kind of enveloped in it and just be be nodding their head, be singing along as soon as possible. That's what matters. And if the drums and the vocals are off, then that's not gonna happen as easily. And with that in mind, just listen to a few of these again, specifically uh, listen to the snare and the drums and the vocals. You can hear the vocal is definitely clearly audible uh, above the mix. It sounds energetic. It sounds in your face. And likewise, the drums have impact. You can feel the transients. Um, they're not they're not totally dominating the whole mix, but you can you can hear them and you can feel them. And that snare has that that 
crack and attitude and character. Now let's kind of get into an actual mix session and, and break this down further just to demonstrate this even more clearly for you. So here's like a indie rock mix. So to really demonstrate what I'm talking about here, let's just see what would happen if we completely switch out the guitar tone in this mix. So these are my main guitar tracks here. The amps were recorded, let's mute those. And over here, I brought the DIs in and I've just put this Archetype Nolly plugin on here and I've just chosen uh, one of my presets and let's, let's hear this. So again, here's the original. And then I'll switch it to the new guitar tone. So totally different amp, totally different tone here, but does it really change the mix that much? Like pretty much within five seconds, my brain and my ears adjust to that new tone. It's like, oh, okay, this sounds good. Now compare that to, you know, what if we were to kind of take something away from the drums. So for example, let's let's mute the parallel compression bus. So now the drums sound a little weaker, still not that bad though. But let's take away the EQ on not even the main EQ, but let's take away some of this subtractive EQ on the kick drum. Let's take away the EQ on the snare, which is just boosting kind of top and bottom. Let's take that away on the snare top and bottom mics and on my snare sample track. Let's take all those EQs away just on the kick and snare and let's see what happens now. Let me turn uh, the drum bus up a little bit since we don't have the parallel just to make it fair. Sounds pretty rough. Again, compared to the final mix. You can see how we've just lost a ton of kind of polish and power in the mix just with taking away some of the EQ moves that I made on the kick and snare. Now, likewise, you know, I, I actually we could probably even get away with this like the drums are not terrible here but i'm just showing you by changing a little bit there we lose a lot in the mix now if i bring all of those things back all my eqs let's bring the parallel compression bus back and let's put the volume back where they were now what happens if we do something similar with the vocals what if i just disable my main vocal eq and compressor It sounds kind of weird. It's kind of distracting. Like it actually makes me a little uncomfortable as a listener. Compared to the actual moves we made. Sounds kind of uncontrolled. Uh, doesn't really have the the presence that the you know the actual mix did. So those are just a couple examples of how. Again, remember we're listening to a totally different guitar tone here. Here's the original.
really different vibe on the guitar tone doesn't make the mix sound off or unprofessional or unpolished but when we just take away a few key elements with the snare and the kick and the vocals the mix kind of starts to fall apart and it no longer sounds professional so i just wanted to demonstrate that and show you why i believe it's the drums and the vocals that really define your mix so if there are areas that you you really need to focus on and make sure you're getting right it's those two areas so try to resist the temptation to get lost in chasing a specific guitar tone especially when you're referencing your mix against other mixes when you're in the mix process you know don't get obsessed about oh this guitar tone sounds like that and i need to do these big eq moves to make mine have the same kind of bite or, or brightness or whatever when i'm listening to reference mixes I don't listen to the guitar tone really at all. I'm just kind of listening to specific uh, areas of the mix, the low end, high end. I definitely don't try to chase guitar tones. I like to just leave guitar tones as much as they are, as they were given to me as possible and not try to mangle them and shape them into something different because I've discovered that that usually leads to a better result than trying to make something into something that it's not. Now, when I first heard CLA say that quote about, you know, other than the vocal, it's the snare that really defines the mix. I got really anxious and kind of depressed because I knew that my snare wasn't wasn't very good. So it just kind of it kind of set me to a rock bottom when I heard that. I got all all stressed and freaked out. Now I don't want you to get freaked out about this or worried if you feel like your vocals or your drums are really not up to par yet. It's okay. It's a journey. It takes time and I want to help you. So if you feel like your vocals are the thing that are really holding your mixes back from that professional bar right now, then check out this video I have on getting an upfront clear polished vocal sound. And if you feel like it's your drums, well, I recommend starting with this tutorial on EQing snares for rock and metal. So hopefully those two things help. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.